So maybe you're like me and you do a lot of 3D printing and thus you've got a ton of leftover stuff either from supports or failed prints that have become spaghettified and you need a way to kind of get rid of them but you don't just want to throw it away. Well here's my idea that I'm testing out. I got this toaster oven on offer up for like 10 bucks and I'm just going to try and melt them down into ingots see what happens and that way maybe one day when making your own filament from leftover scraps becomes financially feasible for the average joe i will have some filament blocks that i can turn into some pellets and reuse at that time but until then i need to create it in a kind of a easy storage solution that's not all spaghettified so this is my little experiment to see whether or not melting these things down in a toaster oven is a good idea. So a few minutes into this run and I'm already starting to see some possible issues. Bubbling. That's never a good thing. I just have to see how the whole thing plays out once we fully melted everything down. But as you can see, everything is starting to turn into a Salvador Dali painting right in front of our very eyes. So about 15, 20 minutes in at uh, 190 to 205 degrees Celsius, uh, it's starting to look a lot like uh, the devil's sweet and sour sauce. So we just kind of got to let this thing play out a bit more and see if it kind of evens out like a liquid would. So about like, I don't know, 25 minutes in there, we finally got it to where it's kind of leveling itself out, but uh, it definitely needs to cool down. But one theme I'm seeing is a ton of boubles. So my best guess is because I only have 20% infill on my prints, the air is getting trapped underneath the melting parts and is trying to escape. Yeah, I probably should have thought of that, but eh, who knows, all is not lost. They do seem to go from being small bubbles and then conjoin into a big bubble and then eventually pop if you leave it in there long enough, which eh, that might have to be the solution. But until then, I'm going to let this thing cool down and then we're going to come back to it and see if I can remove it because I did try melting some stuff on uh, a previous baking sheet and that was stupid of me because now it's uh, like incredibly difficult to get off. So that's why I've got it in tin foil. So here's hoping I can remove it and uh, peel it off. Mm, some lessons got to be learned the hard way, but for the sake of science and experimentation, what the heck. Uh, don't use tin foil. I was hoping I can just pull the tin foil off of the mold here, but it seems to have just made it so it's much more difficult to get off in general. Wow, that took a long time to get everything off. I am covered in plastic and aluminum foil dust because uh, I was just scraping it off with a screwdriver just for like 30 minutes and then I got tired of that in a little spot so I just turned the grinder on and grinded half of the gunk off and so I've, I've got a different idea uh, so this pan might actually be okay to use just as a bare pan because it is flexible so once the plastic hardens, when it cools down, I should be able to flex this and then pop it right out. So I've melted it down into just the straight up metal of this pan. And I was hoping that since this pan flexes a lot, I can kind of flex it and pop it out. But it just kind of conforms to the pan in such a way that it now doesn't flex. So... I'm going to put this in the freezer and hope that maybe the cold will make the plastic contract and hopefully then it'll pop out. I mean, won't know until I try. Well, hey, would you look at this? Putting it in the freezer for a little bit, I was able to flex the metal here and uh, it came out. So I suppose technically this works. You just put it in a pan that that flexes like I don't know if you can see that see how it warps that's what you need melt it down and uh, 
Yeah, once it reaches room temperature, put it in the freezer for like 20, 30 minutes. It'll contract enough that uh, when you you'll be able to flex the metal pan, and the corners will pop off one by one, and then you can just flip it around. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I have no idea if this is genuinely reusable in any way. Um, certainly, a lot of gunk all over it but that honestly that honestly might be be able to solve it. from using a cleaner pan you know i i don't honestly expect to be able to reuse this because any sort of gunk in the filament is going to mess up your print still kind of an interesting proof of concept that you can melt down your old plastic and store it for later and eventually one day when it's cheap enough to grind this up into beads and create your own filaments at home. Maybe you might have a big stash that you can use. So, yeah.